Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and I hope you're all doing great. It's been a pretty good week here in the fish room at TM Aquatics. We had a really big spawn from the Green Laser Corys. We also had a nice spawn from the L134 Leopard Frog Plecos with a 100% hatch rate. Not a single egg was lost. We'll go ahead and take a look at those fry. They're actually hatching out as we speak. And we also had a nice hatch from the L260 Queen Arabesque Plecos. Don't go anywhere, stick around, and check this one out. All right, YouTube, we're gonna start out this video over here once again with the L134 Leopard Frog Pleco Tank. This is a 55 gallon tank. This is where I keep my group of wild caught adults. They are an active breeding colony. And they started breeding or spawning for me exactly one year ago on New Year's Eve 2018. And we're going to be ending the year just as we rang it in last year with some L134 spawning because down in this cave right here, that's my alpha male and he's got a girl trapped in there. And they are more than likely going to be spawning tonight. I hope that I can get to the eggs in the morning before he does because he does like to eat the eggs. But they'll probably be spawning tonight and I'll go ahead and try and trigger that spawn as well. And... Uh, what I do to try and trigger that spawn is tonight I will be doing a big water change on this tank and I will be adding pure RO water, but it's going to be cooler water. So it does two things. It drops the TDS and it drops the temperature. So if we look over here, currently the temperature is 81 degrees. So when I'm done with the water change, I want the water in the tank, the entire tank, I want the temperature to drop four to five degrees. Ideally, I would like it down to at least 77 degrees, if not 76. And then the TDS going into this tank is gonna be much lower. Currently the TDS is 40 to 50, somewhere in there. And my RO water is about two to three TDS. I don't run deionization because I don't keep caradina shrimp, corals, or salt water. So I just have a, a dual membrane RO system. It's just uh, sediment filters and carbon blocks. But my water comes out around two to three TDS. So that water will drop the TDS, the temp uh, will drop the temp, uh, tank temp down four to five degrees. And uh, between the two should trigger these guys into uh, finishing the job tonight and take care of business. Now down here on the floor, um, my most recent spawn, I was able to removed before that male uh, got to the eggs and, and decided to eat them. We had a really nice spawn of uh, at least 40 eggs and they hatched out today. And if you take a close look, we have over 40 L134 leopard frog pleco fry in that egg tumbler. We didn't have a single egg lost to bacteria or fungus. We had a 100% hatch rate. There's still a couple that need to hatch. But I'm really excited about this. I really needed a good hatch. I've really struggled with the L134 so far this breeding season. And uh, getting a nice hatch like this was definitely overdue and uh, super excited about that here in the fish room. All right, YouTube, this here is my L260 Queen Arabesque tank. These are a nice little high pan cistrus. We'll go ahead and take a look at them real quick. There's one down there. And most of them are in the caves. But we had a spawn from them the same time that the L134 Leopard Frog Pleco spawned. And the fryer in this red cave here. Now that was down in the tank over here. And if you watched couple of my previous videos I mentioned that I want to leave the male with the eggs. Now with my leopard frog plecos I try to pull those eggs because the male eats the eggs and the first time the queen arabesque plecos spawned I pulled those eggs in fear that the male would eat the eggs but this time I decided to leave the eggs in there to see what type of parent he would make. This is our first spawn from them we have 10 fry in there. I left this spawn in with the male to see what type of uh, parent he would make and he did a great job with the eggs. However, once the eggs hatched, he abandoned the fry. And I'm not sure why that was. The good news is everybody's present and accounted for 
and we actually ended up with more than I thought we would end up with because when I saw the egg bundle it looked like a pretty small egg bundle if we look down in there I'll see if I can get the camera to focus down in there okay there we go I think we have anywhere from 12 to 15 so I'm really excited more L260s in the fish room always exciting always a good day when you have high pan cistrus hatching out in your fish room all right YouTube and the third and final big spawn this week was with my group of green laser Cory Doris yet once again this is a 40 gallon breeder and in here I have about 20 adult green laser Corydoras. I also have probably 15 to 20 juveniles and fry in here from various hatches and spawns. You can see a whole bunch of different sizes. These are all fry and they've either uh, hatched out in the tank from eggs that I've dropped or left in the tank to hatch out or they've escaped the clutches of the uh, fry boxes. Either way, there's a whole bunch in there. I do try to net them out and move them into grow-out tanks when I, uh, when I have time because I don't need 40 Corydoras in one tank. But these guys spawned for me this past Sunday night. They spawned. It was a small spawn that evening. There were about 40 eggs. I picked them, put them up in this fry box, and then on Monday morning I came down here, and oh my gosh. They just exploded. There were probably 170 to 200 eggs scattered all over in this tank. I picked about another 120 or so and put in the fry box. You can just see every surface is just littered with eggs. There's a bunch of eggs down here on the bottom. There's a bunch of eggs on all these plants on the bulbitis leaves. Um, not all of them were fertilized. There's some infertile eggs in here. but. Uh, I probably left 50 or so eggs in the tank. I just don't need that many green laser Corydoras. You know, here's a big uh, bunch of eggs right there on that leaf. Looks like about a dozen eggs. But I left about another 50 or eggs in the tank. Most of them have fallen victim to the snails and such. Uh, there's a bunch over here. There's a bunch up in the corner behind the uh, sponge filter back over there. There were some back on the uh, heater back on the back wall as well. Uh, currently in the fish room, I have about 200 fry I'm growing out. I don't need, you know, three, 400 fry. I'm kind of getting overrun. So with that being said, if you're anywhere near or around the Quad Cities, um, Davenport, Iowa, February 9th, Sunday, February 9th, the Quad City Fish Swap will be taking place. And uh, my brother and I will have a vendor table there. I'll have some green lasers and some L134 Leopard Frog Plecos probably a bunch of super reds, maybe some uh, ocelotus shell dwellers. He'll have a bunch of uh, duplicarious uh, Corydoras and uh, maybe some L201s and some other plecos. So uh, if you're around that fish swap or you're plan on attending, stop by the TM Aquatics booth and um, introduce yourself and check out what we bring down and yeah, it'd be great. But anyways, uh, three really exciting spawns this past week a great way to end 2019 all right youtube there you have it this has been a fantastic week and a great way to end the year 2019 at tm aquatics three really nice spawns here in the fish room we had a great hatch out of the l134 leopard frog plecos a nice hatch out of the l260 queen arabesque plecos and then the green laser corridor is coming through again and exploding for 150 to 200 eggs in that fry box. 2019 has been a great year here at TM Aquatics, but I'm looking forward to 2020. We've got the L397s that are gonna spawn this next year. If we keep the 333s, the 333s will spawn. We've got the Corydoras Equus over here. We have the CW49s over here, and this is gonna be the year of the Zebra Pleco here at TM Aquatics. By the end of this calendar year, those Zebra Plecos should be spawning for us and that's going to be an exciting time. Anyways, I appreciate each and every one of you stopping by, taking time out of your day to watch one of my videos. 
If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Hit the like button on your way out. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. Happy New Year to everybody. And until the next one, we'll catch you all later.